Hey, you did a great job on the test yesterday. Keep it up. Mr. Johnson said as I walked past him. Thank you, sir. I replied, smiling. I knew I was going to ace the test, so it wasn't a big deal for me. I'm pretty sure I had the highest scores in the whole class. I continued to walk until I got to my locker, then I put in my code and opened it to retrieve my chemistry textbook when I was confronted with a foul smell. The smell hit me so hard that I had to take a few steps back. I looked up the locker to investigate the source of the smell and found out that it was manure. Most probably the ones used for the various plants that could be found all over the school. Who would do such a thing? I wondered. I was getting really vexed when the answer to my question suddenly presented itself before me. I was sure that this was the doing of Anne and her two friends, Agnes and Gloria. Throughout the semester, they had always tried to make life difficult for me in whatever way they could. If they were not hiding my textbooks, they were spreading false rumors about me saying I did something which I had no idea about. But this time, I had had enough. I walked straight to the principal's office, but his secretary told me to wait a little since he was still attending to someone. I sat in the reception, stewing in my anger, and after a few minutes, Anne walked out of his office, smiling. As soon as she saw me, her smile grew wider and wider and more mischievous, as if to taunt me about what she had done to me. I entered the principal's office to file my complaint. Sir, I have come to report a serious issue, I said angrily. What is it this time, Matilda? Mr. Roundbottom, the school principal answered. Sir, someone put some stinky manure in my locker today, and I know who it is! Oh really? Who was it that did such a dastardly act? He asked sarcastically. It was Anne, or one of her friends. I know it! They always do things like this to me, I replied. And do you have any proof to back up your allegations? Proof? Of course I don't have any proof. I don't think I need one. No one else in this school plays such stupid pranks on me apart from the three of them. They always do this to me, and they laugh in my face about it. Well, I'm sorry, Matilda. If you don't have any proof it's them, there's nothing I can do. I can't punish innocent students. Innocent? I just told you that they weren't. They are the main culprits, and I'm the victim. It's because Anne's your daughter, isn't it? And you're trying to protect her. This isn't the first time I'm coming to you about her actions, and yet you continue to do nothing about it! I yelled angrily. That'll be all, Matilda. Mr. Roundbottom said, waving his hand at me and dismissing me. I stamped my foot on the ground, got up from my seat, and walked out of the office, slamming the door behind me. On my way to math class, I walked by Jacob, the school basketball captain, and also the jock who happened to be Anne's boyfriend. He was the most handsome and popular boy in school, so it only seemed right that he dated Anne, who was the most beautiful and popular girl in school. They were sort of like a power couple in school, and everyone admired them. Well, everyone except me. I managed to get into class just in time, and as soon as I was seated, the teacher announced a pop quiz. Audible groans and complaints could be heard from every student, as no one was prepared for it. But the test was on anyway. At the end of the school day, the math teacher called me aside to inform me that I did extremely well on the quiz. He also informed me of a regional mathematics competition that was to be held soon, and he encouraged me to register for it, which I promptly did. After registration, I was put in a preliminary stage, and I, alongside others, were put through further tests to pick a single competitor. I emerged victorious at the preliminary stage, and I was selected as the single competitor to represent my school district at the regional competition. The competition was to happen over the weekend at a neighboring town, and the expenses were covered by my school. It was an amazing experience for me, as I had never been outside my town before. The day of the regional competition came, and I remember being nervous that day. I had studied a lot up until the early morning of the D-Day. A few hours later, the regional competition had ended, and once again, I was declared the winner. This meant that I had a shot at becoming the national champion at the national mathematics competition. News of my victory at the regional level spread far and wide in my town. My town was not very big, so news like this traveled very quickly. And before I knew it, I was suddenly the talk of the town, and my name was on the lips of almost everyone. The local television news station even came down to my school to do an interview with me, which ran throughout the week. In a flash, I had become a local celebrity overnight. 
this celebrity status most definitely extended to my school, where every student suddenly knew my name, and every teacher used me as a shining example of why students should always work hard. I was now the most popular person in my school, even more popular than Anne and her friends, which didn't sit well with them, as I would soon come to find out. The very next week, another quiz was organized by a teacher and, as usual, I knew that this would not be a problem for me. I expected to score the highest marks as usual and smiled to myself as I finished in half the time and submitted my answer sheet. Throughout that same week, a series of tests were organized by different teachers and I was confident in each of my answers. So imagine my surprise when, the next week, I got all my answer sheets for the various subjects and failed woefully in all of them. I had to clean my eyes numerous times because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I even checked the name to be sure that it was mine. But staring at me boldly in the face was a big fat F with my name on the answer sheet. To make matters worse, I was informed by the principal that as a result of my woeful performance in the school tests, I would not be selected for the state mathematics competition and someone else would be selected instead of me. Such news was unbearable to me and I rushed to the restroom to cry my eyes out. While in a toilet cubicle and in the middle of my crying session, I overheard some footsteps and before long they started to talk about something which caught my attention. One of them was Gloria. Hey, did you hear about Matilda? Gloria asked. Yeah, I heard. I heard that she failed woefully in the tests and she was withdrawn from the national competition. Her friend answered, Well, it serves her right. And it was all our doing. What did you do? We did a little switcheroo with her answer scripts after the test. Well, Anne switched it. I just distracted the teachers while she did it. Really? Isn't that a little bit wicked? Did she offend you in any way? Her friend asked, surprised at what Gloria did. She's a bratty little Einstein. She deserves it. What? I heard all of this through the cubicle and decided to plot my revenge. First, I managed to obtain some of the strongest itching creams known to man and applied them on Anne's cheerleader uniform, along with the uniforms of her friends Gloria and Agnes. As soon as their skin came into contact with it, they itched so uncontrollably that they were unable to continue with cheerleader practice. Even when they took the uniform off, the pain was unbearable and they continued to itch for days. <laughs> they had no idea who the culprit was, so I continued with my revenge mission. Next, I sabotaged Anne's relationship with Jacob by hacking Anne's phone and inserting some suspicious messages in there to make it look like she was cheating on Jacob. Then, I informed Jacob that Anne was cheating on him and encouraged him to check her messages. He did that and immediately broke up with her after finding the messages. After that, I decided to go a step further by making Jacob fall in love with me. It was harder than I expected, but I'm smart so I managed to pull it off. I made my relationship with Jacob extremely public in our school which made Anne jealous. As the new popular girl in school, I was invited to a party thrown by one of the richest kids in the school. He pleaded with me to attend and I obliged. I came along with Jacob and we were nominated party king and queen. After being crowned party king and queen at the party, Jacob and I were asked to give a speech. And in the middle of mine, I kissed Jacob in front of everybody, making sure that Anne saw me do this. I could see the anger in her face and I decided to up the ante by telling her that Jacob always thought she was not smart and was only with her because of her looks and popularity. The whole party laughed at Anne and mocked her as she stormed out of the party. When it was time to go home, I stumbled upon Anne and found her drenched in tears. It seemed like she'd been crying for hours. I walked past her, but after a few steps, I turned back to her and sat down with her. She apologized to me for being jealous of me and confessed to me about all she'd done to sabotage my chances at the competition, including switching my answer sheets. I sat with her quietly, listening, recording her and gathering information that I would use for the final nail on her coffin. I'm sorry for everything. 
She concluded, tears still streaming down her face. I know you are, I replied, smiling. The next day, as Anne walked into school, what greeted her were pictures of her in the school newspaper, complete with her entire confession and admission of guilt. That day, the whole school saw Anne and her friends for whom they truly were. I smiled mischievously at Anne as she walked past me on her way to the principal's office. But this time, there was nothing her father could do to protect her. I eavesdropped on their conversation as I heard him telling her that because of the overwhelming evidence against her, there was nothing he could do to get her out of this mess. He also told her that if nothing was done about this, he could lose his job. And so he made her apologize to me in front of the entire school. After which they were expelled from the school, amidst cheers and celebration from the other students. I had broken up with Jacob since I had no use for him anymore. The Joker tried to get back with Anne, but she was done too. Babe, I miss you. Jacob said to Anne as she walked away, but she didn't even turn back. Back at school, I thought everything was okay now, until I was called into the principal's office, a couple of weeks later amidst allegations of cheating. It turns out that another student had been going around spreading rumors of me cheating in all of my tests, and it had somehow gotten back to the principal. The principal, still sour about what I had done to his daughter, tried to make me pay, and he saw this as an opportunity. I was told that based on these serious allegations, I would have to rewrite every single test and exam I had previously written that semester alone, and under extremely strict conditions. I was a little bothered about this, but I agreed to rewrite everything in order to clear my name and put an end to the rumors. I retook every single test and exam, and when the results came out, it turned out that I had scored even higher than before. This put the rumors to rest and help me to increase my popularity among the students. Like and subscribe if you ever want to be popular in your life. See ya! Avery, I sent $10,000 to your account. You need to leave your current location because I think someone spotted you. What? There's a random picture of you online. Conspiracy theorists are starting to say all kinds of things. That you were abducted by aliens, that your mom locked you up somewhere, and now that you're hiding for some kind of crime. People will come up with anything. You just have to stay out of the spotlight until we can go ahead with our plan. Okay, Sandra, I'll leave now. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. Oh, and put on a red wig or something so that people don't notice you. You might be wondering who Sandra is. She's my celebrity mom's assistant. You might also be wondering what our plan is. Well, we're going to sue my mom, get her thrown into prison, and take all her money. Why? Because she's the absolute worst human being on the planet. And if you don't believe me, you definitely will as I continue my story. Just make sure you keep watching. When I was very young, my parents divorced and I stayed with my mom. But I was <laughs> raised by her assistants all my life as she was too busy to ever look after me. It's okay though, they were fun. And I had lots of cool stuff. The best room a girl could imagine, all the latest toys. I went to a private school, so unlike many celebrities' kids, I had a social life and friends who were fun to play with. Everyone always made a huge fuss over my mom, though, and apart from her assistants and my friends, no one paid much attention to me. I think it's because I was a very average-looking kid. Or maybe I was just boring. I don't know. I didn't think too much of it until I was a teenager and I was invited to a talk show with my mom. Wow, you have such a lovely daughter. How come we've never heard much about her before? Well, I tried to keep her away from the public eye, but even when I took her outside, no one really noticed. It appears that she's blossomed quite beautifully. Avery, what's it like having a celebrity for a mom? Um, it's cool, I guess. Everyone in the crowd cheered like I had said something so important. That night, I was trending on Twitter. People were sharing my picture and referring to me as a hidden treasure. They wanted to know my hair care routine, facial care routine, everything. The truth was that I didn't have any of those. I couldn't understand what they were making a fuss about and I wasn't used to that level of attention at all. I went to stand in front of a mirror and I examined myself. It was true, I looked nothing like I did when I was a child. I was 16 years old now and I was drop dead gorgeous. My hair was long and shiny, my skin was smooth and radiant, and I had the most beautiful eyes imaginable. 
My body was perfect too, and I hope I don't sound like I'm boasting, but it's true. The next day, we received calls from loads of popular clothing brands offering me free clothes, and one of them even offered me a modeling contract. We accepted the clothes, of course, but my mom said that I had to focus on school and that modeling wasn't for a girl like me. I started an Instagram account and instantly got millions of followers. It was no trouble for me to get that blue tick. But after about a week or so of fame, I noticed that my mom was starting to seem annoyed. She didn't want to talk to me at all, and I don't know why. I thought that maybe she was just having a bad day, but she became stranger and stranger every day. For example, one day when I got back from school, she was trying on some of my clothes. When she saw me walk in, she pulled a few outfits from the closet and left the room. And this was how she started wearing trendy teen clothes. She had one of her assistants take hundreds of pictures of her and she posted some to her social media pages. Eventually, she started talking to me again, but it was to ask the weirdest things. One afternoon, I was sitting in the living room watching a movie when she broke her silence. How much do you weigh? When I told her the answer, she gasped and looked like she was going to cry. The next day, she informed everyone that I was on a strict diet and that all carbs and sugars had to be thrown away. Even my ice cream. I can't live without ice cream. Oh my gosh. Luckily, one of her assistants brought a mini fridge to my room and I was able to keep as much junk food as I wanted. It gets worse though. I was playing on my phone after school when I got a notification from my friend Bella. She sent me an article that was published that day. The title went something like, who is hotter, Gregoria or her daughter Avery? The results are in, it's definitely Gregoria. A hot picture of my mom was posted next to what looked like a photoshopped picture of me. And I looked awful. I read all the way to the end and saw that I was written by a journalist who was actually her friend. Could she have asked him to write that? I didn't want to believe my own mother would do something like that to me. But when I got home, I realized that it really was her. I went up to her room and showed her the article, but she was on the phone with her manager. I decided to stand outside until she was finished, but nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to listen to. Of course I had that article released. Avery is becoming a sensation, and I can't allow it to happen. She can't become more popular than me. It will sabotage me. What do you mean I'm getting old and I'm not the hottest thing around anymore? That's ridiculous. She will never be more beautiful than me, and if you think so, you're just delusional. I can fire you and find a new manager, you know? She hung up, and I walked in and just stared at her in shock. Mom? Honey, I can explain. But I didn't wait for an explanation. I slammed the door and went to my own room. The next morning, she was nowhere to be found. I asked one of her assistants, and she told me that she found one wrinkle next to her eye and nearly had a nervous breakdown, so she was somewhere having plastic surgery. That made me laugh a lot. I decided to walk to school that day, and while I was on my way, a random man stood in front of me and took my picture. By the time I reached school, I was trending on Twitter again. Has celebrity Gregoria lied about Avery's looks? And the picture that weird guy took that morning was everywhere. Some of my classmates started taking pictures and posted them on their own social media pages, and lots of people shared them. So obviously, my mom was fuming, but I tried to stay out of her way as much as I could. I started getting calls from people who wanted me to star in their advertisements or movies, but I knew my mom would never give her consent. I just wanted to be out of the spotlight, to be honest. But every single time I stepped out of the house, people would start taking my picture and everyone on the internet would be going on and on about how beautiful they thought I was. I thought that maybe I could consider the celebrity life after I became an adult and moved away from my mom. Anyway, my mom realized that since she couldn't lie about me not being beautiful, she would try to make it a reality and you'll never believe what she did next. Now, I'm a really heavy sleeper, so there could be a riot happening outside and I wouldn't know. I woke up one morning and I didn't feel like myself. I wasn't sure what was wrong, but I was convinced that something was off. I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and when I looked in the mirror, I screamed. One of my mom's assistants, Sandra, came running in. What's wrong, dear? Oh my gosh, what happened? I woke up like this. It's awful. Just then, my mom walked in holding a ponytail with my long hair flowing beneath. Why did you cut my hair, mom? I look like a boy now. There's only one pretty person in this house, and it's not you. She left, and I burst into tears. Don't worry, Avery. It'll grow back. For now, you can wear wigs. They make them really well these days. We can get one that looks just like your normal hair. 
Sandra said while trying to comfort me. And this did work for a while. I actually had fun experimenting with different wigs. I wore all different colors, pink, neon yellow, red, purple, and my hair slowly grew back. I was still quite popular and many girls decided that they were into wigs now that I'd made them popular. But do you think my mom stopped there? Of course she didn't. For a few weeks, I noticed that I was gaining weight and that I was getting weird zits all over my face. I even went to a doctor about it, but she couldn't find anything wrong. Have you changed your diet in any way? She asked. I thought for a while, but then it hit me. I hadn't changed my diet at all, but could my mom be putting something in the food? That night, I decided to check the security camera footage because we had cameras in all the rooms in our house. I saw my mom adding a white powdery substance to all my food. Sometimes she'd add it in my breakfast smoothies and other times she'd just sprinkle it over dinner after the chef had done cooking. I couldn't believe it. Well, to be honest, at this point, I could. She really wanted to ruin me. I went up to my room to think, what if I leaked this to the press? Everyone would hate her for sure. But then what would happen to me if she was sent to jail? Just as I was lost in my thoughts, Sandra walked into my room looking worried. Listen, Avery, I just found out that your mom is planning to send you far away to some boarding school. And I know you will hate it there. Oh no. But I have an idea. What? You just have to run. Get out of here. I can send you money whenever you need it because I have access to all your mom's accounts. She doesn't even check the transactions. When you're old enough, you can sue her. She'll go to jail and you'll get all her money. I've seen you suffer enough. I think it will only get worse. You need to leave. At that point, I realized that Sandra was right. I needed to get as far away as I could from my mother. I packed a bag and snuck out that same night. My mom hasn't even bothered to look for me. Not even a missing persons report was filed. I guess she really didn't care. But the truth will come out someday and you'll know who she is. I can't wait to get my revenge. My musical talent brought me a lot of admirers, but it also brought about a lot of jealousy. Thinking about registering for the competition? What was happening? My vision was fading and my eyes were closing. I was told not to say this, but for the longest time I always wished I was someone else or at least had another body. As far back as I could remember, I was always the prettiest girl around. And from as little as five years old, even strangers approached me and told me how lovely I was and what a beautiful smile I had, even when I tried to hide it. Sometimes I got tired of the compliments and decided to look as unattractive as I could by wearing ill-fitting clothes or not smiling. But it seemed like no matter what I did, I could never hide my beauty. To make matters worse, I knew how to play a lot of instruments, more than I could count. My dad recognized my fascination for music and was extremely happy. He decided to teach me as much as he could and we spent almost every free time we had together playing musical instruments. He started from the piano and I could see him grinning from ear to ear as I quickly picked it up and learned to play it. The day I finally mastered it, we went out to my favorite restaurant and I was allowed to order whatever I wanted. Can I have a chocolate chip ice cream? Of course you can, sweetie, but if I were you, I wouldn't eat too much of it. Why? Too much ice cream can destroy your teeth, and no one wants to listen to a piano player with missing teeth. After learning the piano, my dad decided to move on to others, depending on my interest in the instrument. He never forced or imposed any instrument on me. In fact, oftentimes, I was the one who went to disturb him to teach me to play an instrument, and he always obliged with a smile on his face. <laughs> learning and playing with my dad was always enjoyable for both of us. He called me a musical genius because of how quickly I learned and how well I could play after a short time of learning. He decided to enroll me into some musical talent competitions and I was miles ahead of my competition, winning every single one with ease. Most of the competitions I participated in were when I was barely 10 and there I was, winning against some children who were four or five years older. My musical talent brought me a lot of admirers, but it also brought about a lot of jealousy. And surprisingly, most of it came from girls. This was not restricted to just the girls in my school, but it seemed that every girl I met instantly grew jealous of me. Click the like and subscribe button to show that you're not a jealous human. Right up to high school, I hardly had any female friends. And on the rare occasions that I did, they didn't seem to stick around after they found out just how talented I was. Fred, 
why don't I have any friends? I said to my twin brother one day. It was something that had been bothering me. Myra, who says you don't have any friends? You have me, Fred said smiling. You don't count. You're my brother. That is such a hurtful thing to say. You're breaking my heart, Myra, he replied, playfully clutching his chest and feigning a broken heart. I'm being serious, Fred. You have lots of friends, but I don't seem to have any. Well, since you want to be serious, I would say that it might be that maybe they are intimidated by you and view you as a threat. A threat? How am I a threat? Because you can do lots of things that they can't. You're also extremely smart and beautiful, and I guess they're just jealous. I listened to what he said, and I thought about it a little more. I guess he was right. They were intimidated by everything I could do, coupled with the fact that I was also beautiful and smart. I tried making more female friends, but it all ended in failure. I had no trouble with boys, as they all seemed to like me, sometimes a little too much. My brother was my closest friend and confidant, and he was a very easygoing and likable person who had a lot of friends. And because we hung out a lot, by extension, his friends slowly started becoming my friends too. In school, I walked past a bright poster and stopped to check it out. Displayed on it was information about a modeling competition to be held in the school. Anyone and everyone was invited to participate. As I continued reading the poster, I was suddenly surrounded by three girls. I could recognize one of them. Her name was Tabitha, and she was well known around the school. I had no idea who the other two girls with her were. They were probably her friends. Hey, your name's Myra, right? Tabitha asked. Uh, yes. Is anything the matter? Thinking about registering for the competition? She asked, pointing at the poster. Well, I only just saw it, but I don't think I will. Why? Come on, don't tell me you're shy. What have you got to lose? Besides, you have a really nice body. I think you've got a shot at winning. Really? You think so? I was surprised and excited at this sudden vote of confidence. If anyone knew anything about beauty, it was surely Tabitha. She was one of the most beautiful girls in the school. Of course I think so. Don't you guys think so? She asked as she gestured to her friends. They both nodded their heads in approval and chimed in with their thoughts on why they thought I should register and compete. They also offered to give me tips and help give me the best shot at winning the competition. I was surprised at their offer and their warmness and kindness towards me. Maybe I could finally have some female friends. We talked for a while before they left, leaving me standing there and smiling to myself. They'd finally convinced me to register for the competition, and that was what I was going to do. The day of the competition arrived, and I met up with Tabitha and her friends. They brought me a dress to wear, as they had earlier promised. Tabitha said it was one of hers. Wow, she even gave me her dress. She was a true friend. I wore the dress and it fit perfectly. Thank you for the dress, Tabitha. I really appreciate it. I said to her, You're welcome. And please, stop calling me Tabitha. Call me Tabby. It's what my friends call me. She replied amidst smiles. Okay, Tabby. How about a little makeup? Tabby offered. Everyone needs a little makeup. I'm not really a fan of makeup. I never use makeup. I objected. Come on, just a little. Besides, everyone competing in this modeling competition is going to be wearing makeup. All right, just a little. I finally relented. I sat for a few minutes as Tabby applied the makeup. I must admit, she was pretty good at makeup, and it seemed to enhance my beauty, but I knew not to get used to it as I didn't know when next I would decide to wear makeup. You look gorgeous, Tabby declared as soon as she had finished with my face. Here, drink this. One of Tabby's friends handed me a can. What's this? I asked puzzled. It's an energy drink. To keep your energy up? Modeling competitions are notoriously time-consuming and energy-draining, so you'll need this to keep your strength." Tabby answered. All right, I said as I emptied the entire contents of the can. After I was done with the energy drink, Tabby also handed me something in a circular container. It contained cream. Before I could ask what it was, Tabby said to me, The cream is used to prevent sweating. Sweat will ruin your makeup. And you know it's going to be hot when you're under all those bright lights and among the contestants in that crowded hall. You're going to need to apply it on your neck and arms. It also makes you glow and look good. Okay. I applied the cream as instructed. 
We took a couple of selfies together, and soon, it was my turn. I was called up to the catwalk, and I walked just as Tabby and her friends had taught me. I could hear cheers from those present, and this encouraged me. But halfway through my walk, my skin started to itch me, precisely the places where I had applied that cream given to me. What was happening? I also began to notice huge red welts forming on my skin almost instantaneously. I tried as hard as I could to ignore them, and had to restrain myself to keep myself from itching. I continued walking, but soon enough, I became drowsy and started seeing double. I stopped for a moment and tried to say something or call for help, but hard as I tried, I could not make my lips move or make any recognizable sound. Since I had difficulty moving forwards, I decided to try and move backwards, and it worked for a split second, until my heel broke and I could feel the entire weight of my body collapse on my ankles. Everything seemed to be moving in slow motion as I collapsed and hit my head against something. My vision was fading and my eyes were closing. But before everything went black, I noticed Tabby and her friends laughing and pointing at me. One of them was even still taking pictures of me. And then everything went black. I wasn't surprised when I woke up in the hospital some hours later. My parents were beside me when I awoke, and I could see the relief on their faces as I opened my eyes and spoke. It was obvious that they had been with me all through the time I was unconscious. The doctor soon came in and explained that the energy drink I had ingested was the cause of my drowsiness and eventual collapse on stage. He also said that the cream was the chief culprit for the welts on my body. Lucky for me, he said that the effects were not permanent and they would administer some drugs to counter the effects faster. I was in the hospital for a week, and when I returned back to school, I immediately looked for Tabby and her friends to confront them about what they had done to me. I searched for them throughout the school for the whole day before I was later informed that they were not in school. As a matter of fact, they would never be in the school again as they had been expelled, courtesy of my brother, who made sure to gather all the necessary evidence against them and he didn't rest until they were punished. I was thankful to God for giving me someone like him as a brother. Although the girls were gone, there was nothing my brother or I could do about the pictures of me covered in welts and walking funny, as they had been plastered all over the internet and a significant number of people in the school had seen it. Thankfully, thanks to their short attention span and the never-ending supply of other interesting things to talk about, my incident was very soon forgotten about, and everything went back to normal. At least, it did for everybody else. After what had happened, I begged my parents profusely to enroll me in another school, as I didn't want to go back there. And after days of pleading, they finally agreed, and I switched to another school. My brother also switched to my school, out of his own volition, because, as he said, he had to protect me and make sure I was safe at all times. In the new school, the same thing threatened to happen, as the girls began to despise me. I joined the girls' clubs in a bid to become closer to them, but as I continually and constantly bested them at every turn, it seemed to drive them farther. I decided to stop caring about their acceptance and joined the boys' groups where I was more accepted and they made me feel comfortable. I decided to remain there and accepted my school life as it was, and we continued with school. Very soon, my twin brother and I graduated from high school and went to college. In college, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that things were different. Everyone, both boys and girls, equally liked and accepted me. My brother was happy that finally, I was able to live a normal life and make friends with everyone, regardless of what gender they were. I'm happy my life turned out much better. If you've ever experienced anything like this, please share it in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video for others like this.